this is amazing. So I'm about to go see Tron Legacy. And so, yeah, I'm going to film my time going there. Going to have to do a little bit of homework because I'm at school and I'm just kind of lame like that. Um, so, yeah. I'm going with my dad, and so let's go. All right, guys, so if you don't live where it's cold, this is what's cold. This is what's up. Hey, guys, so this might be really bad because it's probably, like, the first time I've ever driven in the snow. Like, you know. Like, in the snow, like, that's where it's at. So, I don't know if I can do it, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try, I have to go get my dad from this one place, so I'm gonna try. Hey, I did it, I drove to my dad's office. Now I'm gonna go, go see him so we can go see Tron Legacy. What do you think is gonna happen? How do you think you're gonna like it? I think it's gonna be amazing. It's Tron, when I grew up, it just came out. Did you see it in theaters? Jeff Bridges. They didn't have theaters when I was a kid. Oh. In fact, they didn't have cameras. They just told us about it. We had to close our eyes and make a picture and make believe. Hey, Dad, what do you think about it? Wow. I know, right? It was beyond the word amazing, wasn't it? It was beyond amazing. It was just fun, yeah. It was amazing, amazing. It was insane. It felt like I was the Tron dad and Christian was the Tron son. Hey, YouTube. So I just got back from seeing Tron Legacy and it was so insane. Um, it actually makes Avatar look like a joke. And so that makes me really, really happy. It really does because it's so insane and so awesome. And if you don't believe me, um, they took my ticket away from me. So I did get something awesome though for a free the Tron poster. The one over there. Except this one does something very special. The Naked Jeff Bridges. Alright, so guys, if you don't know already, Tron is a big deal. Uh, people have been waiting for like years and years for this, for that. And so, you know, as me, as a 17 year old, you know, kid, I don't, I don't remember the old one. I wasn't there when it came out. So I don't have anything to base it on. And you know, Disney kinda, uh, you know, discontinued it. So I really don't have anything to base it on. So anyway, as a standalone film, um, as an epic adventure, <laughs> It was pretty amazing. It really was. I think the problem with Avatar is, you know, you watch it and it gets, it's really cool, it's a fun experience, but then it gets really boring and there's this point where it's just boring, boring, boring. And then for this, it just keeps on going on and on and on. And the way you have to see it is IMAX. There is no other way to see this movie with its, you know, with all its brilliance than IMAX. Uh, it really does take advantage of the 3D. I have never actually seen um, 3D immersed itself so well other than this, you know, um, I've seen Avatar in 3D, I've seen, you know, The Final Destination, which probably should have not have been in 3D, I've seen a lot of other 3D movies, and this is definitely the best 3D experience I've had. Um, definitely seeing the Pirates of the Caribbean trailer in 3D, along with, um, along with this one about some monkeys. It really showed what 3D is. I've never seen anything more 3D than this monkey movie about wildlife. Like, they literally had monkeys just grabbing and like, mmm, for like, bananas or something. But it was so cool. Like, I've never seen anything like it. Um, the screen got really big for it. It looked like you were looking into a mirror and you saw all these elephants. Um, but that's besides the point. This is getting away from this. Although I thought it was cool, it did not need to be in 3D. I don't like 3D. Um, so, yeah, I'm just putting that out there. I don't like 3D. Um, the acting was so good. I did not expect this great of acting, especially from a movie as this type. I remember seeing Avatar, and it was like, you know, it was a cool movie. Um, it has great special effects. It created this whole world. But the acting was just awful. The dialogue was flat. You know, it was not believable. Um, but in this movie... Um, Wild and Doland and everyone else that was in it, they did such a good job. And I gotta commemorate Michael Sheen on his um, part as, you know, the really silly guy who's all crazy and he runs the clubs. Um, I really, really enjoyed his character. I thought he was really funny. My dad also enjoyed him, so that was good. And so, yeah, it was, there, there was a lot of cool characters in there. Um, and a lot of really, really cool ideas that were explored. You know, I was just getting ready throughout the movie, um, just thinking about ways I could explain to the Australian lady that I saw again from the Tron Knight, 
Um, she was the lady who got me into it um, because she saw my name on the list and you know she took me back there and stuff. And so I was getting ready to just tell her like this was beyond amazing, this was insane, this was awesome. Throughout the entire movie, like there was never a dull moment. I mean, of course there was like one or two, but I mean it was just, like action, 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 awesome, and special effects. I have never seen so much special effects work so well in my life. It was just this experience. This was movie was an experience that you need to see in IMAX. Um, I got to see this movie because this comic book store um, gave out free passes if you buy a um, Disney related product. Disney is owned by Marvel. I bought you know the Amazing Spider-Man something. He's it's the one where he's Venom or Black or something like that and so I got a free pass they took the free pass but they gave me a free poster so it totally made up for it and so um, yeah it was just a really really fun time and I'm really really happy I got to have this experience so you know I'm gonna have a spoiler section because there's so much that happened and I don't want to give anything away so that's coming up in like three you better leave two you better go one alright so by now, either you've seen Tron or you don't care about Tron. But anyway, um, there are two flaws that I found with Tron. Number one, why do they look so much like people? The isotopes or iso something, they look so much like regular people. Um, it kind of took away from the whole, you know, this is all imaginary technology robots type thing. I don't know, maybe Jeff Bridges' character, um, you know, went in there and... I don't know, somehow made it look like humans, but they look so much like humans, it kind of took away from the experience. But that was okay because, you know, you know that was not a big deal at all. I really, really didn't like, um, but it really still was not a big deal because it totally made sense, was Jeff Bridges, his voice, his um, dialogue, was a little risky at times. He would say, Chase? Christian, the man who saw the movie with me. Okay. What wow. Double oh, rainbow double tron. Rainbow. <laughs> Somewhere over the rainbow tron. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was good, right? Trantastic. Trantastic. <laughs> you didn't feel dirty afterwards? Not so bad. Not like black I got my adulthood back. Oh, it's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Six out of ten. <laughs> there you go. That was a man who loved 2012. <laughs> wow. What a great movie that was. Anyway, Jeff Bridges' character, his dialogue was like, groovy man, and way to go, um, yo, and, you know, he had that dialogue that you might find in a 18, 1985 movie, maybe, and so, maybe that was clever, I guess, because he really hasn't been to, you know, 2010's world, or, you know, the 21st century, so, I mean, he doesn't know how we talk, and so he's still in that world. Um, but it just kind of came off as kind of silly, maybe, at some times, kind of hokey. When Jeff Bridges, he was um, talking to Sam, and Sam goes, um, Wi-Fi, something about Wi-Fi. And, um, and Jeff Bridges goes, I thought about that in 1985, or something like that. It was really funny because he, you know, really felt you know, that he was, you know, back in the day, and he's a really genius man, so it really fit with his character, it was really, really funny. Um, and also, I really liked the deep, deep scenes w with Sam and, um, Sam and Jeff Bridges' character. I thought they were really, really touching. I didn't expect this movie to be anywhere near as touching as it actually was. Um, you could really feel that they really missed each other, and there was really this bond. And, you know, I just love that. I loved... You know, the editing, I loved how, you know, you really felt for the characters. I just, I just loved it. Um, and I'm totally going to go see it again with my brothers on Friday. And I think you guys should go see it too, because it's pretty, pretty darn amazing. And so, yes, I must go back to the world world and study the American pageant. <laughs> I gotta do it. I gotta do homework now. I don't want to. I had so much fun. Um, I took a break from the real world, and now I have to stay for finals, and... You know, it was just fun. If, you, if you're still in school, um, beyond next Friday, go see this movie. Take a break from stuff. If you're, you know, stressed out about work or, you know, anything in your life you're stressed out about, you know, just 
just pay the $17 to get into IMAX. You know, just take a break and love life, you know. Uh, you know, I think Moves Day do a good job at that. Enter into a world and actually feel for the characters instead of, you know, having, you know, two-dimensional characters like Avatar. Um, you know, you can, you can just have fun with it and enjoy it and actually be serious about it and have a good time. I think this movie does something that no other movie I've ever seen has done before and to use the technology in a way that does never get that never gets boring that still has character development that still has a plot that still is just really 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 good and I commemorate Disney on picking this one up. Thank you, um, I ever directed it, I totally forgot, I should probably look that up, I should probably have that in the review, um, but I'm sorry, he did a really good job. Um, I actually got to, um, see him when I went to, um, Comic-Con, which, um, Comic-Con footage is, um, down in the description, and it was so cool because he had this saying where we would read off a board like, yeah, or like, wind's lore, wind's lore. And we had no idea what these words mean, like wind's lore, or like, game on, game on. And we were like, okay, yeah. But it turns out that they were actually like, they actually use our voices, um, you know, not like mine, but like, you know, thousands and thousands of people um, to be the crowd in the movie. So even though you can't actually like distinctly hear my voice, and but I know like they used you know, me and other people shouting uh, to use in the movie, which just adds another bit of awesome to it. So, um, yeah, I commemorate the director about that. That was pretty cool. Um, and so, yeah, that's another thing. Draft Punk, the score, so good, so well done. It really fit into the movie so well. Um, and, you know, you know, I usually don't like slow motion scenes, but in this movie, there are some slow motion scenes that are just epic, you no know, no music, you know, they're just like, he's just like writing it on his like board thingy and it comes around really slowly around him and then the music starts again and it's just like, you know, epic and everything just was just so good. Um, and I want to know what you guys thought about the ending where, um, where um, Olivia Wilde's character got to see the outside for the first time and um, Sam goes home free. Uh, I I actually kind of enjoyed that actually. I didn't um, at first. I was like, "Hey, wait, what's up?" But then you know, you saw Olivia's expressions, and you're like, "Oh, she has never seen the outside. That's actually pretty cool. Um, that's a pretty cool ending." And then you know, Sam leaving and going um, wherever you don't know where, and that's also pretty cool because you don't know what to expect. You know, it's all up to the imagination where it goes and what happens next. And I think that was a very clever way to end it. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I didn't really see the emotion that, oh, he left his dad at the other world, and, you know, you don't, I think that they might have, you know, they could have put, you know, him feeling sad about that in the other world, or in this world, but, um, you know, they just, they just didn't, they just, you know, he leaves the other world, goes to this world, and he jumps on a motorcycle um, with his lover, so, I mean, even though they don't show him, you know, crying over Jeff Bridges um, as his dad, you know, it's okay. <laughs> I will go on. It was still pretty awesome and a pretty cool way to end it. And so, um, yeah, thank you for listening to this review. Um, it's much appreciated. I hope you subscribe to see more reviews of other movies, um, you know, on DVD, Blu-ray, movie theaters, advanced screenings, whatever. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Subscribe, friend, live, love, comment, you know, video response if you've seen it, uh, video response if you haven't seen it and want to talk about it. Um, you know, I just, you know, YouTube is cool and it's a fan community and it's uh, amazing. So, you know, like this movie, YouTube's amazing. So I hope you liked it. I hope, you know, you kind of go away and watch it in IMAX and enjoy the experience and I'll see you guys later.